Hello once again. Um, I apologize for any background sound. I have a fan on and I don't know how it's going to affect uh, the recording, but I'll do a test of it after I record this and see how it goes. Um, anyway, I'm back here with Avalon Hills Guadalcanal from 1966, the second edition. I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, game turn one, which is August the 7th, 1942. I'm going to just kind of go through a few uh, detailed examples and stuff, and I'll explain certain um, functions, systems, whatever, as I encounter them. But pretty much if I've gone over them already, I'll probably just skip them. Most likely I'll do a turn and then show you the results, that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to use the basic rules for the most part. However, I'm going to add from the tournament rules in the battle menu, I'm going to add uh, the effects of terrain on movement, um, zones of control, and how they are affected by jungle. I will probably use just a variation of the artillery uh, fire. I'm not going to use the record casualty reduction pad, so I'm just you know just going to use the basic attacker back D2 type of thing, whatever. Um, but I will use the artillery fire as it's stated as far as artillery units can fire up to seven hexes. Um, I'm going to use it kind of like the old SPI quad games and stuff. Um, you don't have to have line of sight or anything. You can just fire artillery units up to, like I said, seven hexes. You can combine fire if all the artillery units are in the same hex. And if they're not, then you can only fire... Um, uh, single unit or whatever. If they're adjacent or in the zone of control of an enemy unit, they may only attack that unit. The defend uh, the units that are in their zone of control, whatever. Um, units in jungle. Apologize for the color too. It looks kind of yellow and washed out. But um, I haven't invested in LED lights yet, so we're using the good old incandescent bulbs. Anyway. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, units in jungle, or let's just put it this way. Units in jungle hexes do not exert a zone of control in other jungle hexes. They exert a zone of control to any clear hex outside the jungle, but they do not uh, have zones of zones of control in the jungle, therefore they are not obligated to attack any unit in the jungle. Now, I assume that since there are multiple hexes, multiple jungle hexes, I assume that you may attack? I don't know, I'll have to double check it. Um, usually if you move into an enemy zone of control, you must attack that unit um, but we'll figure that out that's the only modifications I'm really going to make just pretty much that nothing spectacular so anyway I'm going to give a brief example of uh, the invasion uh, part of the game so um, the Japanese at start units must set up on or within seven hexes of Henderson Field. I see no reason not to put them on Henderson Field. They're basically uh, labor battalions and construction battalions, that type of thing, or so, some kind of defense, I don't know. Um, let me see here. Let me double check something here. The artillery firing table in the tournament rules um, has, oh, what is it called? 
the more units you put into a hex, the greater the chance, uh, the greater the effect of the artillery. I'm not so sure if I want to do that or not. I'll probably just pass on that. Although stacking is three units, but on the artillery firing table, it goes. In the basic game, there is no artillery firing table, but in the tournament rules, you basically have if there's four or less. You have three columns. One is for four or less factors in a hex. The next is five to eight. And then the third column is nine or more. Um, unless I did my own table and added disruption rules or something like that to the basic game, I'm just going to ignore that. Anyway, artillery can fire up to seven hexes. They can combine their firepower if they're all in the same hex. Otherwise, it's singular and they're going to be adjacent to enemy units. They cannot fire up to seven hexes. So, anyway. Um, units landing on a coast square, either in an invasion or on the order of appearance entrance, are placed on the first coast square at a cost of two from their basic turn allowance, or basically two movement points, instead of one, which you normally use. So, historically, kind of, the fifth and first marine landed um, on or close to the Henderson Field area. So that's what I'm going to kind of do as well. I'm going to, you have to stop on an enemy zone of control, which this unit will exert one here, or these two units will exert one here, 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 and here. Um, so you have to stop and have combat. But I figure if, you know, I land a unit here, land a unit here, move to here. Um, any hex with a river costs two. I'm not quite sure if you spend um, two and then two for the river. I may do that because I'm not I'm not clear on that. And then I'll probably move a unit here, and that'll give me um, a, or a couple units. That'll give me a good uh, attack um, from the beach. I may also try to move a unit from here to here. And perhaps here to help uh, uh, surround the unit. I may also land. Uh, I don't know if this little town here would be considered a coastal hex. Um, it's not quite clear. In fact, towns I don't think have much of any kind of effect on anything. So let's see movement through villages on the road costs one movement allowance but I don't know that I'll be on the road I'll probably go ahead and land it here well I'm not sure I think if they have to cross a major river they're eliminated so if I can just put a unit here and then around here I should be able to eliminate um, the Japanese construction battalions and labor battalions on Henderson Field so without further ado I think we'll just go ahead and start uh, let's see. This is probably not in any particular historical order, but you know, this is probably not 100% historical game. So we're going to go ahead and land the first battalion of the Fifth Marines uh, on this coastal hex, costing two movement points, and they have to stop. Um, since I'm not using the tournament artillery rules, I guess I don't have to worry about um, over st or stacking um, density. That's the word I was looking for. The tournament rules use a, a density um, table for artillery. So I will stop talking about the tournament rules with respect to artillery because I think I've already made myself semi clear on that and I want to bore you to death. So I'm going to go ahead and land the 3rd Battalion of the 5th Marine for two. I have a bunch of units here I really don't know what I'm going to do with, but I think... Actually, I'm going to take this move back and land for two, and then move him there. Uh, the first, I think I'll land over here for one, two, three, four, and then we'll just move up adjacent for five, basically. Um, I have three battalions of the first Marine. I'm not quite sure how I want to handle that. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and land. Um, 
here for two, three, four because of the river and coastal hex on invasions. I don't know if that's accurate, but like I said, I'm going to go ahead and penalize, penalize them for it. Just because. I think I will then go ahead and just stack there. Like I said, stacking's up to three. I think I'm just going to stack all three of the first uh, Marine um, 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 Brigade, Regiment, whatever you call it. You know, it's a battalion size. Now that leaves me artillery, um, some engineers, some light tanks, etc., uh, etc. Et engineers, the light light tanks, like this one. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it's a little dark to me, but who knows. Um, light tanks can move, say, onto a river without stopping or without costing any movement points and they can stop there and they become a bridge um, they don't pay any movement points to enter the hex with the river the engineers on the other hand have to pay the two movement points to enter but they can stop and then therefore act like a bridge um, thereafter so since uh, rivers cost two to enter I guess that's a um, pretty good deal so let's see here eh, make a little less of a mess um, I'm gonna land this uh, P unit I should uh, go ahead and look at what that is in the tournament rules no uh, German it'd be pioneer here it is pioneers well that's weird um, we'll land the pioneer unit here for two Road movement is basically free and unless you hit uh, an enemy zone of control. You can uh, cross, cross, you can combine movement, um, combine road movement, which is pretty much unlimited with non-road movement, as long as you have the, mo uh, the movement point, so to speak. The only thing you have to stop or have to worry about is I think zones of control. Yeah. So, one, two, and I'm going to move him over to Tinaru, kind of to put up a blocking uh, position there, I guess. Uh, let's see, what else? Hopefully, focus and some kind of light is uh, available. The light tanks, which I've just flipped over. The light tank and this and this is actually a mortar unit, the SW. The light tanks, not 100% sure what to do with them at the moment, but I think I may move them down to Mantanese, the very famous Mantanikau uh, village hex. Although I don't really have much to support them with. I may go ahead and send the engineers down there. It doesn't really provide any sort of you know, bonus or anything. Are we going to focus again? Uh, focus. 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 <sighs> focus. Here we go. Focus. Okay, just a minute here. I love autofocus. Okay. Come on. That looks good. There we go. That looks like we're focused. Okay. Anyway. I think we'll go ahead and put a blocking position uh, near Menton Nikau. So we'll just basically land it here. Well, I'm still going to have to fight my way through a bunch of stuff. Let's go ahead and land the light, um, the light armor here that acts as bridges. Adjust my camera again a little bit. Yeah, still, yeah, it's not kind of focus. Okay, one, two, three, four. Jungle is. What am I doing? One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this is gonna take forever to get up there. Seven, eight. I guess I'm just gonna swing them around over there. Well, let's go here. Seven, eight, nine, and then we'll just put him here. Use a use him as a bridge. And then the engineers will try to follow up with that. Um. They pretty much use the same type of, uh, pretty much have the same effect. Uh, until I know really what I want to do with them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's as far as he can go. Actually, he may just go ten and make sure that these units here are destroyed in any kind of a defender back two type of thing. I'm going to go ahead and land uh, the three artillery units. Just going to land them right here. It's still uh, in focus and stuff. And I have a light tank and a mortar, or whatever it is, a heavy mortar. I guess I'll put the heavy mortar here. And then the light tank, which I'm still debating on where exactly to put it. Um, I guess we'll put it on uh, one, two, put it on the road here. Because I guess that's the best place for them. Alright, that's pretty much the movement phase. Now we will go to combat. Nobody's in, uh, let's see, nobody's in a, think, think, think. Nobody's in a jungle, so everybody has zones of control. Zones of control, um, you have to have combat. Um... I'm trying to forget how, or, yeah, I'm trying to forget how to do this. I'm trying to remember how the blue and gray work. I think you just combine your artillery fire with uh, everything else. Or if it had to fire separately. In this game, yeah, I know, I'm talking about artillery again. In this game, the defender gets to fire first with his artillery if we were using tournament rules. At this particular point, I'm not officially using tournament rules. I know, blah, blah, blah. So, I'm going to say, and I want to play it my way, basically. I'm not going to play it 100% by the rules, because I basically want to have fun, and I want to play it uh, the way I want to play it. I'm going to say artillery has to fire first. Defender first, then attacker first, and then we have um, normal combat. Unless the artillery, of course, is in an enemy zone of control, then it must uh, attack as normal units. So, there you have it. No defender artillery fire, so we're going to go ahead and have uh, attacking artillery fire. So I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven in that hex versus six. There's no real terrain advantage, I don't believe, for any kind of village or anything like that. But let me double check. Defending units are on clear, coast, jungle, road, or village. I'll call it a village. Attacking units are on river squares. Hmm, probably didn't plan for this. I know I'm firing artillery, but I want to double check something. Hmm. And I'll have to double check if that is all or if it's negated by units that are not. Anyway, um, the artillery units here. Six, six, seven, eight. No, two, four, six. Four, five, six, seven. Okay. So seven to six. There is no doubling because the attacker is not on a river square. In fact, most of these effects for doubling and such only really apply if the unit, one of the units, is um, on hilltops or in river squares. So I'm going to say they don't get anything because nobody is attacking on a river square from artillery. So. We'll move along. Sorry, this is very painful. It's going to be basically a one-to-one -one attack. And I'm going to roll on the one-to-one -one table. Actually, basic units attacking from the end of a river. Defense units defending these remains doubled. Okay. So, die roll is a two. Let's see how that affects uh, focus. Hey, cool. Uh, result of a two is an exchange. So, just like in most of the old squad games. If artillery units fire, um, if artillery units fire, they're not affected by defender or attacker results or exchanges. 
because an exchange means that the defender would lose all of his units and the attacker removes the same number. Um, I'm not going to allow, I don't think, artillery to completely obliterate a stack, but um, then again, if I roll a DE elimination, all that type of stuff, they would. So I guess we'll eliminate the stack of Japanese units. They were just pounded by artillery. Um, but nobody can advance because it was just artillery fire. But Henderson Field is now um, clear of enemy units. So, with that, we would have the Japanese turn. However, Japan does not get any units uh, until the 14th or the next turn. So basically, this turn is over. We'll advance to the 14th. The U.S. player always gets to go first. And on the 14th, let's see, he'll bring in, or he gets to bring in. Um, I can't see that one, sorry. He'll get to bring in. Um, what is this unit? Looks like an artillery unit. You know, I should know all this stuff. Artillery, um, infantry artillery, defense unit, coastal. Well, there you have it. So, I don't know. I don't think they have any special um, abilities of any kind. I think they're just like a normal combat unit. But most likely, I'll put him on Henderson Field. So, we'll go ahead and finish this turn because there's like nobody coming in. Uh, well, actually, this is the 14th, so yes, there will be some Japanese units come in. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, do the U.S. movement <clears throat> and bring in reinforcements. I think it says to bring in the reinforcements first, but, you know, whatever. So, looking at the strategic view of this, which... We're not going to get a very good uh, look at, I'm afraid. I think I'm going to go ahead and move up and defend the... Let's see. Well, the little... The big river on Kola, Kola Point. That... Um, whatever the river is called. Now... Um, Whatever. Um, you can look it up on a map, I guess. Let's see if I can get close enough to it to make it out. I have no idea. Anyway, it's on Guadalcanal Island if you uh, want to Google that, I guess. So we're probably going to defend that line here for now. Set up a perimeter there. And then moving over here to Manta Nikau. Manta Nikau. Uh, whatever, I'll call it what I want. <laughs> we'll probably set up a defensive line around here, too. Um, and then we'll wait and see what the Japanese uh, decide to do, where they'll land. Historically, I think they landed farther to the, I'm going to say west, um, near Tenero and that area. But we'll see here in a little bit. So, we'll just take the western side here, I guess. First here. We're going to go ahead and move the first uh, Marine Regiment, whatever, by road. And we're going to occupy uh, Mantanico. Um, it's technically a jungle hex. So, and everything around it except here and here are jungle hexes. So, I don't think it exerts... A zone of control into those hexes that are jungle. All right, let's move the. Yeah, let's just go ahead and move the second reg or battalion. Free move basically along the road. Two, four. He's on a. He's technically on the same river, even though it kind of branches off here and there. Um, there's an effect for there's an effect on combat for units that are attacking from different uh, rivers and such. 
Um, far as I can tell, this is all one basic river. It only has the one name. Um, so I guess it uh, is all part of the same river. So if there was an attack from, say, up here to down here, they're all part of the same uh, river. So I'm going to go ahead and move the second uh, battalion there. And the third battalion, I think we're going to try and uh, get up to the slope. But since there's no deal there, hmm, three, one, two. One, two. Slopes, I don't think, cost anything. Put that there in case it's just deciding to go ahead and just uh, go out of focus. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. Slopes don't cost anything. So, you just pay the normal cost of terrain. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him up to the slope. Three, one, two, three, four, five, basically, with the river. And then I'm going to go ahead and move this unit, the 3rd Battalion, free down to here. <coughs> That's free, not three. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think the rivers and jungle are cumulative. So that sets up a little perimeter there. He'll exert his own control there. Solo focus? Good. Um, we'll see. I'll probably have to backfill a little bit here. I'm going to leave the LVT where it's at for now. <clears throat> and see about putting the engineers up uh, at Mantinique out. So free... One, this has jungle, so I'm just going to go ahead and count it as uh, two, two, three, and then along the road for nothing. So he'll move into this town and help uh, protect it. Now, what else we got? Hmm, let's go ahead and move the rest of the um, Marine Regiment that uh, has strength over uh, to here. They're going to have to stretch a little bit, but not too much. Have I got all my units there? The first, the first, the first. There was only two units of the fifth. And I think he's here. Yes. So, we're just going to use the road. Free movement. And we're going to put him right here. Uh, this fellow unit will also do pretty much the same. But we'll stop here and then go one, two, three. Like I said, I don't think there's a cumulative movement point penalty. If there is, I will reverse that. Like I say, jungle is two. <clears throat> Unit entering the jungle incurs the two. Unit leaving the jungle does so at the normal rate. If a unit only has one, it may not go into the next one. Okay. Anyway, that's that at the moment. We will probably put, like I say, I'm just going to go ahead and put this unit on Henderson Field. You can make it clearly. I'm not sure what to do with the light tank at the moment. This is definitely not tank country. I guess it's pretty much just a, um, uh, more or less just a modifier. So I'm going to put it on Henderson Field, or Force Multiplier more than anything, I guess, not a modifier, uh, or whatever. It just adds to the strength, and we went into blur, blur mode here. Come on, come on. We can put a man on the moon, we can surely make a camera that uh, can autofocus correctly. Just a minute. Bear with me here, please. Yeah, that's good for the moment. Let's see. 
Okay. Artillery can fire out to seven hexes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know about defensive artillery. It doesn't say anything about uh, well, other than the defender fires first. I don't know that you can support a defense with artillery or not. I might kind of double check that, and make a ruling on that. But I think that's going to be good for there. If I did, I'd move them over one. In fact, I think I will move them over. Um, I'm going to put the smaller unit on Henderson Field, the smaller uh, kind of a mortar type of unit, and I blur out again. <sighs> Come on. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Um, Pioneer unit, I guess, will move up to... Well, let's see. Let's take her down. One, two, three, four. So we'll just put it down here as kind of a kind of just a little extra to kind of anchor that line a little bit. The other thing I have to move, I guess, the last thing I have to move is the artillery. We're pretty good here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I might go ahead and kind of centralize it. One, two, three. Like I said, stacking is three, so. Okay. Other than that, I have, let's see, three Japanese units coming on. There's no combat, obviously. And I will save that for uh, another time. Like I said, I'll probably just go ahead from here on out, uh, run the turns, and then show you the results. It'll make it a lot easier on all of us, a lot less painful. Um, and give me time to think and collect my thoughts, which tend to wander off sometimes. Anyway, until next time, I'll talk to you later.